Hello and welcome back to part two, uh, where we are talking about what's trending in the real estate industry uh, currently and going forward. And this section is mainly going to be focused on technology. Uh, we are currently seeing, and if you've not seen these, you probably have been once again living under a rock, that there is a huge rise in the online brokers and the DIY brokers. Uh, and they are trying to, and successfully, I might add, disrupt the, the traditional model of how real estate agents used to work. Now you've got the issue with consumers that have access to information as readily as we do. All right. So that's really making it a lot easier for them to control the process. Now, I'm not going to argue whether that's right or wrong, but they see it, they being the consumers see it as being able to control the process because now they have access to all this stuff. All right. So these online tools that you are seeing out there are now allowing consumers to do property searches, virtual tours. There's even a one out there, DIYreality.com that gives the class on how to sell your home. Now, it's going to be important that you understand that as traditional real estate agents and acting professionals like you and I, we still have a valuable role in this process because A, we've got to corroborate the information that they think they're getting and they still have not got the acumen. I mean, I can read everything I want to read about playing in a football game and my first football game is still going to probably suck all right so you as a professional though still have to embrace the technology you are going to be using these same tools and you have to adapt to what they're expecting or what they want to remain competitive against the person sitting to your left or your right all right so there is a blend in the new normal coming with a traditional approach that we have been providing, but you're going to have to blend it with some new digital approaches, uh, incorporating those online tools and other issues like that to help you get a wider reach for your clients. So as we step into 2024 and beyond, you got to understand that there's a transformation coming. All right. So with these technological advances and consumers preferences, they're going to reshape how we do our job. One of the most prominent trends that you see rising is the online broker and the DIY broker. So this is what we're going to talk about. So let's talk a little bit about these online real estate platforms that are out there. Now we're not going to mention, Specifically, I've mentioned one. There's another one out there called List with Freedom. Um, but typically, these are going to be in general kind of concepts. So, for instance, like market data. Online real estate platforms now become very powerful hubs for market data and market information. And they sometimes give this information for free. Now, there are some paid websites out there, but the point is the information that deals with property values, neighborhood trends, market dynamics, crime statistics, school uh, ratings, all of these are now out there for the consumer to get. A lot of these sites will aggregate data from other sources. So they cut down on the time where you might have to go look at, let's just use crime statistics in a zip code and have to search one and then the other to kind of get a neighborhood area. These platforms will scrape data and aggregate them into one uh, page, if you will. And that provides that consumer user with valuable insights and saves a lot of time, especially if they're wanting to make a decision about buying or selling or investing. All right. The other thing is you guys, do you guys use agent profiles? Uh, these online platforms, like I mentioned earlier, 
aggregate data that's already out there. So you want to make sure your data is out there. You have to make sure that you have very detailed agent uh, profiles. Now consumers can evaluate real estate professionals based on this data that you are putting out there, like experience, reviews. This is a common thing. I don't know about you guys, but my wife, uh, first thing she looks at in almost every category we do, dinner, movies, plays, vacations, she looks and reads reviews. And this transparency enhances that process for the client allowing them to choose an agent whose expertise aligns with what they want, meaning what neighborhood, meaning what type of property, uh, meaning experience, uh, meaning age, uh, all of these things. So make sure that you guys have great agent profiles out there. When it comes to DIY real estate transactions, and I'm going to add a side note here, for those of you that have known me for the last two or three years, maybe even four before the COVID, I was a big proponent and pushing this because I honestly believe that one of the things you're going to start seeing are flat fee brokerages. All right. The DIY craze is becoming very evident with a lot of consumers. It's gaining popularity. And with the flat fee brokers now offering an alternative to what we used to call the traditional commission-based model, these now platform allow the sellers to pay a fixed fee for specific services. All right. So some of you out there might confuse this with limited service agency. There could be a flat fee that gives full service. There could be a flat fee that gives limited service. All right. Flat fee brokerages appeal to clients that want to have more control over the process. So like I mentioned earlier, and I guess I am going to mention some, some names. If you go to DIY Realty uh, or listwithfreedom.com, those guys are flat fee. Those are two that I have brought to my attention. All right. Um, virtual tours. This is a technology 3d walkthrough. Uh, what is that Matterport, uh, is the camera, the integration of virtual tours and 3d walkthroughs is, uh, from online platforms revolutionizes how properties can be viewed now. Now with that, let me say that I don't think a person, I don't think the average person would buy a house without physically seeing it at least once, all right? Now, I know some of you guys out there are gonna raise your hand and go, well, I sold houses sight unseen from out-of-state buyers. Yes, that, that will happen and has happened. But what I'm talking about is the normal mom and pop home buyer probably wants to see the house physically before they buy, cool? Now, with that premise, understand that these virtual tours and 3D walkthroughs actually can limit the number of physical viewings. That's where their benefit comes in, I believe. All right. Because what it does is it allows the consumer to get a basic first pass overview, um, understanding of what the house looks like, what the space looks like, what are the physical limitations. So this technology is going to enhance the process because it's going to cut down on the number of physical showings. What I think you're going to see in this area are people that are going to say, well, here's 20 houses and we're going to look at the VR headset, which I haven't mentioned yet, but I think that's coming too and go through the house and eliminate 16 or 18 of those 20 and now narrow it down and allow a, now they're going to say, okay, now I want to use you, Mr. Professional to go physically see two houses. So that's going to cut down on time. It's going to cut down on the money. It's going to cut down on a lot of things. So I don't think it's going to be the answer to buying a house but I think it's going to reduce the wasted time and energy 
that goes into buying a house. Now, the next thing is, and we guys already use this. This is ironically funny. When 2020 came along and people are like, uh, you know, we do all, we're going to adopt digital signatures. Dude, we've been doing this for a while. All right. So we do use that digital signature and digital transaction, which streamlines the paperwork. Plus, it solves a lot of other things. Storage, you know, we've got copies now stored. We don't have to physically store the contract somewhere and move files off site or digitize them because now we have that. Obviously, it helps in the reduction of time because you are now not driving to your client in, you know, southern Okeechobee, Florida, and then driving back to your office in Orlando. Uh, so we can, it saves time with this. So this convenience that benefits both the sellers and the buyers and us is also fostering a more efficient and secure transaction. All right. Now, where there's going to be other disruptions is going to be the integration of data with AI. All right. This technology can vastly predict market trends way better than I can, all right? They can evaluate properties. They can actually make personalized recommendations. All of this AI that is, we are just on the precipice of, I believe, is going to become further integrated into our business. And you guys need to learn that you're going to have to use this if you want to gain a competitive edge on the person sitting to your left or to your right, all right? Plus, it's going to help you with your deal flow just from the speed of everything. Now, there's a new thing, not really new, but probably new to a lot of you that have not really heard about it or discussed it, is blockchain. Blockchain is what they call an immutable database. So let me give you an example of what an immutable database is. An immutable database is a database that is not changed. It is just added to. Let me give you the best example that maybe you understand it. Your medical records are an immutable database. When you get a new prescription, they don't remove the current one there. They just add to it. So eventually, when you get to be my age or older and you go in to see a doctor, they have got your history of prescriptions and medical visits and all of that because that database just keeps getting longer. It is not changed. It is that's an immutable database. Blockchain works on that concept. So it will be able to increasingly gain popularity and its potential to revolutionize the real estate industry. Now, I've made this prediction and I don't know the time frame, but if blockchain becomes commonplace in the real estate world, I honestly believe that title companies may find themselves as a thing of the past. Because think about what we use a title company for. We use a title company because we don't trust people. We don't trust the owner. We don't believe 100% that he owns it. We don't believe that's the only mortgage. Well, all of that could be kept on a blockchain where now all it does is run a quick thing and say, yes, Raymond owns the property. Here's the only mortgage, blah, 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 blah. And we can use smart contracts to pay that kind of stuff off. And transfer of ownership will just change in a matter of minutes without having to go through this whole process of title search, title insurance, all of that. Now, that's just my prediction and what do I know? All right, blockchain does have the potential to reduce fraud, streamline the process, and it will create a tamper-proof record of ownership. That's what I'm talking about because it is stored on multiple computers and if somebody hacks one computer and says no, Bob owns it instead of Raymond, but there is a large amount of other computers that still have my name. They would re-overwrite that incorrect block on that chain. That's why it's tamper-proof, okay? <sighs> Let me get my coffee here. 
there's going to be a change in the rental market. All right. Um, there are going to be challenges and legal considerations with data security, privacy, online information may uh, pop its ugly head up. Regulatory frameworks are going to be hard to make sure that there's consumer protection and maintain the integrity of the data that's used. One of the key components of the DIY and the online broker is this whole empowerment to the consumer. They now have a wealth of information and these platforms are going to help them start making informed decisions. So this shift is going to put pre uh, pressure on you and I that do the traditional real estate model. So we are going to have to make sure that we can provide value added services to help our consumer out. All right.